Okay, in today's video, we are going to show you how to use the force versus displacement graph to determine the amount of work done by a force. This is the graph we're going to use for our example. This is example number two. In the previous example, we did a similar problem with a little simpler graph. So you can link to that problem right here, or you can go ahead and watch this one. This is example number two. Here is our force versus displacement graph. It's not force versus time. We're used to seeing time maybe on the x-axis, but this is force versus displacement. The force is measured in Newtons. Positive, below the x-axis, it's negative, meaning that the force has changed direction, okay, or the net force has changed direction. Now you can see here we have the x-axis, the x-axis is measured in meters. This is going to be our displacement. And this curve, this red line, represents the force that is acting on the object. Okay, could be an individual force or it could be the net force. All right, you'll notice that the force is not a constant force. It's a changing force. It starts at zero and then for the first meter it increases to 40 newtons. Then it's constant through five meters and then it starts to decrease and then it changes direction, the net force or the force changes direction, and then it increases in the negative direction to 30 newtons, it's constant, and then it decreases again back to zero, and we're going to figure out the amount of work done by the force between zero and nine meters. Now let's just remind ourselves that the area under the force versus displacement graph is equal to the amount of work done on the object. And you will notice that we have two sections that are under the force versus displacement graph because what we mean by that is the area between the graph and the x-axis. The area between the graph and the x-axis. Okay, We often say under the graph, but what we really mean is the area between the graph and the x-axis. And you can see we have two sections. And you should notice that the, each of these sections is a trapezoid. Okay, and that means that the area of each section is equal to one half base one plus base two times the height of those trapezoids. Okay, now we could break these down into rectangles and triangles, but if you notice our trapezoids, it's a little bit easier and a little quicker. So now we can figure out the area, and the area of the total work done, as I said, the work done is equal to the area under the curve, we have two sections, so that means we're going to first figure out the area for section one, and then we're going to figure out the area for section two. We'll add them together, and that will be the total work done. So four, from zero to six meters, from zero to six meters, you will notice that one base is one, two, three, four, five, six meters. The other base, the other parallel side, is four meters. So it's six plus four, the height is 40 newtons, and 6 plus 4 is 10, times 40 is 400, times 1 half is 200 joules. So for the first 6 meters of motion, the work done on that object is 200 joules. Now let's do the second one from 6 to 9. You'll notice from 6 to 9 that the base, one of the bases is 1 to 3 meters long. The other base is one meter long. The height is minus 30. So it's important to put down here minus 30. It's the area below the curve. Okay, minus 30 times one half. Four times three is 12. Minus times one half is 60. And you get minus 60. Now to get the total amount of work done by the force on the object, we have to add up the area. It's important to remember that sometimes the work is positive and sometimes the work is negative. Positive work means it's work generally being done by a force that's acting in the direction of the motion. And negative work generally occurs when a force, the net force, acts opposite the direction of the motion of the object. We just add those two up, 200 plus minus 60, and we get that the work done on the object by that variable force is 140 newtons plus 140 newtons. Okay? That's all there is to it. Just find the area for each section, add them up, and you get the work done by the object 
on that variable force, by that variable force. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please leave me a nice comment in the comment section below or a thumbs up, and we will see you in the next video. Thank you very much.